The Last of Us Part 3 is happening, or is it? And the Oscars 2021, all this and much more in all the news that happened this week. So this is one of the very first episodes of kind of an entertainment roundup. Let's get into it. How's it guys? Welcome to That Freaking Geek. And like I said, we're going to be covering all the news of the week. And uh, starting off with gaming, Returnal finally has released on the PlayStation 5. People have been wanting a PS5 exclusive to finally come to the console. And it's finally arrived, quenching that thirst. It is a roguelike psychological horror experience where you play as a woman named Celine. After crash landing on a shape-shifting world, you must search through this barren landscape of an ancient civilization to find a way to escape. The twist is, while you fight these weird and threatening creatures, you find that every time you die, you start from the very beginning each time. I didn't manage to pick up this game on launch day because, well, I've got so many games coming out in the week, uh, the weeks ahead, and so I have to choose either I play this game or I eat for the month, and I, I think I chose eating for the month. The reviews all over the world are calling it exceptional, with Metacritic, a website that tallies all the scores, saying it's a solid 86, which is a very honorable score indeed. But many of you are asking, what do I think? Now, I promise as soon as I get it, as soon as I play it, I'll be giving my thoughts on it. Moving on to uh, more PlayStation news, the PlayStation State of Play happened again this past Thursday highlighting new gameplay from Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and it looks absolutely breathtaking. I mean look at it. It looks flippin gorgeous with many other game developers praising it and calling the makers of the game wizards for this kind of beauty in a video game. I mean I'm already so excited for this game. Insomniac already has my money and this gameplay really just got me really more excited for when the game comes out. It was nice to finally see how the new playable character Rivet plays and how she fits into the story. I especially appreciated the look into the all new wacky weapons, but more specifically how the new DualSense controller really lets you feel each weapon as it's fired, giving us new gameplay possibilities that are entirely revolutionary thanks to the new controller. Also don't get me started on this new subtle changes to traversal, such as rocket boots and what looks to be dimension dashing, who knows. June 11th really can't get you any sooner. I cannot wait. The Last of Us 3 is legit. Well, kind of. Well, there, there's at least uh, some writing that's been done. It's a bit of a rough skeleton. You know what? The game is kind of legit and real, but let me get into the story. The Last of Us director Neil Druckmann was speaking on a podcast about his part 2 writing experience and naturally a part 3 question comes up and he says, I don't know how much I want to reveal, co-writer Kelly Cross and I wrote an outline for the story that we're not making but I hope one day it can see the light of day that explores a little bit of what happens after this game, we'll see. I get it, a lot of work goes into these type of games. Take part two for example, it took, it literally took them seven years to create it and so when you try and come up with an idea, you've really got to commit to this idea, you've got to really be psyched to do the story idea because you've got to start committed, commit to it and there's a lot of work and a lot of uh, patience and time and energy that goes into it. He goes on to say, after we finish one of our big titles, we take a long time to explore different ideas. Whether it's going to be The Last of Us Part 3, whether it's something new, whether there's some old franchise we want to go back to, I like to fully explore all of those and look at it like, okay, we have all these ideas in front of us. As a studio, what do we want to commit to? Because it's a huge commitment. Money, time, passion, talent. So you think about all the costs that come with that. And I just want to say to you, sir, Neil Druckmann, take all the time you need because I want this game to be absolutely amazing. So take all the time you need. But I will say in the same breath, please do not make a remake of the first game. If you have to go back to an old game, go back to Ra uh, Jack and Daxter, not Ratchet and Clank. Go back to Jack and Daxter. That is a game series worth going back to. You don't need to do the first one again. But hey, that's just my opinion. Moving on to movies now. And uh, the biggest thing that happened in movies this week has to be the Oscars. And between me and you, I think it kind of sucked this year. Nomadland was the biggest winner of the night, taking home Best Director, 
Best Actress, and the big one of the night, Best Film. Other notable wins include Anthony Hopkins winning Best Actor for his performance in The Father. Daniel Kaluuya won the Best Supporting Actor in, in the phenomenal film Judas and the Black Messiah. Yong Jong Yoon gave us a stellar performance in Minari, winning her the Best Supporting Actress Award. Seoul won Best Animated Film and Tenant won Best Special Effects. There were plenty of awards that went out that night and while a lot of them I do agree with or disagree with, the biggest thing that was for me the biggest letdown was the movie that won Best Picture. I thought No Man Land was absolutely excellent. However, I think the Korean film Minari deserves the win even more. From the excellent performances from Steven Yeun and his on-screen son and grandma, to the excellent heartfelt writing about a foreign family struggling to build their farm and survive in America. I really do believe in my opinion that movie deserved the win. But what do you think? I mean there was tons of things that happened that night. Of course there was the notorious fact that Anthony Hopkins won the, f the best uh, actor role uh, over Chadwick Boseman. Do you think Chadwick deserved the win? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to hear your opinion. Moving on to some Borderlands movie news, we finally have the actress who will be playing Moxie, Gina Gershwin. Now, I have no idea who she is, but I do know the incredible cast she is joining, such as Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart, and Jack Black. As a fan of the series and seeing all these big names, I have high hopes that this action video game turned movie will actually be good. If they can nail the unique humor, the crazy characters, and even crazier world, they might just have a winner on their hands. But it can also be a glorious flop, going down in flames like a psycho just found a flamethrower. Over to Disney, here in South Africa we can look forward to the fact that we will be seeing Pixar's latest film Luca in cinemas across the country and given the incredible studio it's probably going to be another masterpiece. Except in the US where it won't be coming to their big screens but instead go straight to Disney Plus. This has left a lot of staff at Pixar confused and rightfully a bit frustrated. A film like this was made for that big screen, in a room where it's frowned upon to be looking at your phone. No one really knows why these Pixar films such as Soul and Luca are going straight to Disney Plus, because other Disney films such as Mulan and Raya and the Last Dragon actually went to all the big screens around the country. But here in South Africa, I guess we don't have to worry about that because it's, we can only watch it uh, on the big screens here in South Africa. Moving on, now usually I would give you some TV series news, but unfortunately there wasn't anything big that really happened in the TV series uh, kind of scene. So instead, I'm going to give you some uh, great uh, movies and series that you can actually watch on your TV, more specifically you can watch on Netflix, starting with a fantastic film the whole family can enjoy. The Mitchells vs. The Machines is an excellent Netflix movie produced by the brilliant Oscar winning duo Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. This dysfunctional family winds up having to save the world from a robot uprising and is a pure joy to watch. I cannot recommend this hilarious film enough. Okay, maybe you're looking for a TV series to watch now, uh, but with comedy that's a little bit more mature than the light-hearted family one I just gave as a suggestion. Master of None is one of the best TV series I've ever watched. Only two seasons with short 30 minute episodes. This fantastic comedy is well worth a watch, especially because after a hiatus that lasted years, season 3 is finally launching on Netflix on May 23rd. Okay, that comedy maybe, you know, you've binged it, you've watched it, and or maybe you're going, Alec, that's going to be finished very, very quickly. Okay, give me something bingeable, give me something that will last me a while. Well, there is a good place on Netflix that got updated with the fourth and final season. And so it's the perfect series to binge because at least when you finish it, it will have an intentional end and not some cliffhanger where you'll have to wait until next year to see what happens next. Nope, not this comedy. I recommend you watch this thought-provoking series about the afterlife right now. And that's it. Let me know in the comment section how you like this entertainment roundup. I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. It kind of keeps me uh, coming up with content consistently. So if you enjoyed this, like it, share it, maybe even just subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Follow me if you're watching this on Instagram. But guys, this has been fantastic. I'll see you on the next one.